right in place of where the, the song of the day is. Our order of worship for this morning is page 15, but it's page 15 from the Blue Hymn of Solomon. So it's Divine Service 1, page 15 in the front of your blue hymnal supplement if you want to follow along with the hymnal there. Everything will also be projected on the screen. And then the final, uh, the final announcement before we continue is that our hymn of the day, My Song is Love Unknown, uh, we'll, we'll have that on the, the screen there. And so it's an arrangement from point A, which is a, a, a Wells a musical group that, that sets hymns to, 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 to music there. And so we have that. So it'll be on the screen. It'll have the words, it'll have the music, and then the, the, one of the, the singers from that group will be, will be singing the, the hymn with us to help move us to that. So that's going to be the sermon hymn. Pay attention uh, to the screen there. It should be kind of a neat, neat resource there uh, for our hymn. Uh, those are sort of our, our pre-service announcements. We'll uh, continue our worship with our, our hymn, Hymn 127, Stricken, Smith, and Flick. <laughs>
call the order of service, Divine Service 1 on page 15 in the front of your blue hymnal supplement. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am my nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray.
to defend ourselves. Guard and keep us both outwardly and inwardly from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson comes from Jeremiah chapter 26. But as soon as Jeremiah finished telling all the people everything the Lord had commanded him to say, the priests, the prophets, and all the people seized him and said, You must die. Why do you prophesy in the Lord's name that this house will be like Shiloh and this city will be desolate and deserted? And all the people crowded around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard about these things, they went up from the royal palace to the house of the Lord and took their places at the entrance of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and all the people, This man should be sentenced to death because he has prophesied against this city. You have heard it with your own ears. Then Jeremiah said to all the officials and all the people, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and against this city. All the things you have heard. Now reform your ways and your actions and obey the Lord your God. Then the Lord will relent and not bring the disaster he has pronounced against you. As for me, I am in your hands. Do with me whatever you think is good and right. But be assured, however, that if you put me to death, you will bring the guilt of innocent blood on yourselves and on this city and on those who live in it. For in truth, the Lord has sent me to you to speak all of these words in your hearing. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the ensemble. Lord Jesus, you are coming forth. The ensemble will sing the, the verses that are the, the soul's uh, prayer, and then I'll sing the verses that are the, the Lord's response there. So we'll, we'll, we'll have the ensemble. If you want to follow along in your hymnals, it's hymn 126. We'll hear from the ensemble. <coughs>
second lesson comes from Philippians chapter 3, and also one verse from chapter 4. This also serves as a basis for the sermon this morning. Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have told, often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables Him to bring everything under His control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like His glorious body. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. This is the word of the Lord. The verse of the day, Jesus humbled Himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel comes from Luke chapter 13.
that we find ourselves pulled to that sinful pattern of this dark, sinful world. Tempted to conform to that instead. Even though we know better, we should know better. The temptation is there and it's strong. And sometimes we find ourselves being pulled to that. We'll see that. The example that Paul gives us. The example of what Jesus wants us to live is better. We'll see that our citizenship is in heaven. Our true home is in heaven. And that our God is coming soon. Now Paul, he, he really did give us a, a good example for how you should live your life. And, and, and while it's, it's true that, that, that probably none of us are ever going to have quite exactly the same experience, and, and probably most of us are going to have that, that, that giving your, your whole life over to, to spreading the gospel, going to all different sorts of places. Maybe we'll never meet such a hostile reaction where we, 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 we get stoned and, and, and left for dead, where we get beaten up. Or you shipwrecked. Paul really went through a lot. But the, the, the pattern, the example that he's really giving us, it isn't about him giving us some sort of handbook where we can know exactly what to do in, in any and every situation. All we have to do is look to, to the pattern that Paul gives us and we know exactly what to do in any and every situation. No, Paul gives us Principles. Paul gives us really the guiding principle for how we should live our life. What is that pattern? What really guided Paul in his whole life, his whole ministry, that really drove him and, and allowed him to not worry about whether he was getting stoned or shipwrecked or beaten? He put God first. God is the first priority. You put God first. And, and everything that you do, you make that in, in, in service to God and make everything that you do give glory to God. And that is the guiding principle for how we can live our lives. So everything that we do is in giving glory to God, is in honoring Him, is in putting God first. That was the guiding principle for everything that Paul did. But there's another principle. The example of, of this sinful world. And that's the, the pattern that we're so tempted to conform to even though we have something better. Paul warns us many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. That's what we're pulled to. This, this, this pattern, this, this idea, this example of this dark sinful world where it's all about what I want and what makes me happy and, and what I'm driven to do regardless of what my God says about it. Their glory is in their shame. But the problem with this sinful, warped pattern of living is that it's destined to destruction. There's no hope in this path. The only thing that you can ever hope to get out of this sinful path, this sinful pattern of this dark world, is, is punishment. Eternal punishment. Eternal death. That's all you're ever going to get out of this sinful pattern that this world tries so hard to pull you into. There's no hope. There's no future in it. It's a dead end. And we still find ourselves pulled. We still find ourselves pulled. We still find ourselves desiring to conform to that example instead.
think it's an interesting exercise. We do it in Bible information class. There's this, this grid, and, and it's this, this exercise to try to sort of see how many hours do you spend in a given week in any certain activity. And so it'll, it'll list different items, and it's got uh, boxes for you to, to, to list your estimate for how much you think in a typical week you spend. And the first line is, is how many hours do you spend in, in, in church and worship? Then there's a line about how many hours do you spend eating, or how many hours do you spend sleeping, or how many hours do you spend at your job, or, or in entertainment, or with your family. And they have a line for how many hours do you spend in God's Word. And the whole point of the, the exercise it is not that, that there's any perfect system, the perfect allotment of your time to give God the glory perfectly with your priorities. The purpose is to sort of see where you're at and to measure that and maybe get an idea of your priorities and maybe where things might be a little out of balance. And those, those grids, when they fill them out, are always different. Every person that can break through. But... One thing that, that always seems to, to, to strike people is, wow, you know, the ones about God, the ones about worship and, and spending time in God's Word and Bible study, whether at church or, or by myself or with my family. That number maybe is one and, and one. Two hours out of the week. <coughs> you know, and then you look, how many hours do I spend eating or, or sleeping or in entertainment? That's always like, like those numbers don't always reflect what our priorities will be want them to be. And, and so the, the purpose of the exercise isn't necessarily to, to, to make you think that any of these things are wrong or, or bad. Or maybe we see that we can balance things out of that. And so the, the, the bit of, of wisdom, the encouragement from Paul this morning is to put God as your first priority. And everything else will sort of fall into place. When you put God as your first priority and make everything else that you do be giving glory to Him, all the rest of that sort of evens up because God wants you to, to cherish your family and to show your love for Him by showing love to your family. He wants you to, to, to have a job and to work for what you eat. And He even uh, allows us to, to, to use our, our time and, and our money for our own enjoyment. But when you put God first, everything else sort of falls into place. So that's the encouragement this morning, to put God first, to follow that example that Paul gave in his life, the example that Jesus gave in his life, in his ministry. put our spiritual needs first. When he put God's plan of salvation first before his own comfort, his own well-being. When he went to the cross for you. When he suffered for you. Remember who's in control. Remember who's coming again. Jesus is coming soon. And for, for those that conform to that sinful pattern of this dark world, that's a terrifying concept. Because he's coming in, in judgment, and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But for them, it will be too late. They'll be recognizing that Jesus is Lord. But it will be too late. But for us, that day is a good day. For us, Jesus coming back means vindication. For us, Jesus coming back means that we get to be with Him forever in heaven. So the encouragement is to live your life so that you're ready for that day. To live your life so that you're ready to go to heaven. And to conform your life so that it more closely reflects what Jesus wants for you for eternity in heaven. 
And, and that's, that's, that's showing that love. That's showing uh, all glory to God. That's, that's, that's that perfection, that holiness. That's what we're going to have in heaven. And, and so the encouragement is to live your life so that it conforms closer to that, so that we're, we're shaping ourselves closer to that and, and looking forward to that day when our God calls us to heaven and it's perfect. Where he gives us that perfect holiness, where he, he removes the sin, where we don't have to worry about struggling with that temptation to conform to this dark sin world. But the encouragement is to get started today, to already be conforming to that pattern, that pattern of holiness, righteousness, that more closely reflects our holy and righteous God. But it's tough. We still find ourselves pulled into that old pattern. We still find ourselves drawn and tempted to that. But just remember that it's a dead end. Remember that it doesn't lead to anything but death and punishment in hell. There's no future in it. There's no hope in it. And we have something better. The example of Paul. The example of giving glory to God in everything and everything that we do. To have our proper priorities in this life. To put our God first and to make everything that we do in conforming to that. When we do that, we follow that pattern. When we put God first and try to give Him glory in everything that we do, the rest of it sort of falls into place. So think about your priorities. Think about how much time you spend in a week towards Bible study, towards church, towards <coughs> entertainment, towards family. And, and, and maybe in your life as you're looking through and going through that exercise, maybe you find some imbalances. Maybe you find some things that could be changed a little bit in order to more properly reflect that guiding principle, that guiding example of putting God first in your life. Everything else will sort of fall in place. Amen. Please stand. Oh, may the peace of strength and all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in the canticle creative the essence projected on the screen.
Dear Lord, please help our lives to reflect the proper priorities. Please help our actions to reflect the priority of putting you first. Dear Lord, please help us to give all glory to you and everything we think and say and do. Dear Lord, please accept these are first fruits and use them so that we can continue to share this life-giving message to the world. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, because of our sins, we justly deserve to suffer both your curse during our time on earth and your condemnation eternally in hell. But we plead for your mercy because your Son, Jesus, suffered the punishment our sin deserved. For his sake, you have forgiven our sins and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Now trusting that he will intercede for us, we dare ask for your blessing. Mercifully provide whatever each of us may need for body and life. Protect us and those we love from all harm and danger. Maintain good government among us and bless all those in authority with wisdom and integrity. Defend us from the devil and the world which would lure us back into that way that leads to eternal death. Destroy in us the desires that are contrary to your will. Comfort the persecuted, the depressed, the sick, and the dying with the assurance that nothing can separate us from your love. Strengthen our faith by the word of your forgiveness and by the sacrament of our Savior's own body and blood. Grant that we may praise you, our merciful God, by showing mercy to others in all their needs. And this morning we also include a prayer on behalf of the, the family of, of Shirley Batchelor who was called to eternal home this past week. Lord God, Lord of life and death, we thank you for all the mercies which with, with which you have blessed our fellow believer Shirley now fallen asleep. We thank you especially for having brought her to the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would comfort her family and all who mourn her death with your precious promises and cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Grant the lifeless body rest and at last together with us all a joyful resurrection to life everlasting. Teach us to number our days of life that we may gain hearts of wisdom and finally be saved. Through Jesus Christ, our risen and ever-living Lord. And dear Lord, hear us as we also pray to you our private petitions. care our bodies and souls and all things because you have purchased us to be your own with the sacrifice of your son our Lord Jesus Christ and dear Lord hear us as we pray the prayer that you promise the Lord's prayer our, our Father, Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 407.
Blessed Lord, You have given us Your Holy Scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by Your Holy Word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with You and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We conclude with our final hymn, hymn 434. No, we'll sing verse 1. Sunday, March 24th, 2 p.m. 
Join us for a fun night painting and getting to know some of the other wonderful people at St. Peter's. Unfortunately, spots are limited. Please RSVP for this free event. So fun and fellowship paint night. The contact information is there. You can talk to Amanda Bochan or Jane Swanson about that. Should be a fun event there. And then finally, Easter flowers um, are available. Uh, in the back, there's a, the, the, the sign-up sheet for those. Please get those forms in and payment in by April 14th, Sunday, April 14th, which would be called Sunday. Those are the announcements that I have. May God be with you this week.